is up for nearly nearly eight chapters so he's been with us he's uh, been imparting a lot of scientific knowledge you might think what do you mean scientific knowledge i'll explain uh so we've been going through some grilling sankhya philosophy throughout the um oh sol is here so i need i need to be careful with my theology today he's <laughs> got we got a fun police here the vice not rain there so <laughs> just joking so <laughs> so yeah we's been doing some really grilling sankhya philosophy so sankhya philosophy i don't know if you heard my recent class in um the ssrj bhakti center so i went through how the expansive vedic vision and how sankhya is what you see as science now like science in the, the that's actually has its roots in sankhya can you hear me well a little close yeah so sankhya is is kind of literally the fountain head of well spring of all the sciences that you see so i went through in detail in this um class at bhakti ssrg bhakti center so you, you might be able to recall that in the facebook so that i won't repeat that all again and bore you so he is doing that so finally these are his departing instructions departing what happened after he left it's very important because someone does some teaching someone pro, pro, like you know what they say there's a common saying what is that um, act as you preach or something something like that so show what you preach so usually when an incarnation huh? practice what you preach there you go that's what we need some intellectual mathajis to help us out this probably is a space to hold <laughs> so practice what you preach so preach so the reason they every incarnation you will see at the end they show what happened after after his preaching what happened to his life why do they do that they do that because the whole bhagavatam the whole bhagavad gita this tradition of bhakti yoga the way we usually see it as like some people not all of us but the way we see it as like a like a ticket to the vaikuntha plane but sometimes we forget the vaikuntha is here right here okay because we are all souls so there's no difference between the vaikuntha and this planet here except the ontology the ontology here is prakriti and the ontology there is brahman so when we come into the basic ontological life the only difference between a material world and spirit why don't i is here sometimes it's so the, the the fact is laying at our faces and we miss it completely did i tell you the shakespeare story once the shakespeare story did i tell you that story shakespeare and his brother were sleeping in the camping in the night so shakespeare and his brother were camping in the night somewhere and shakespeare's i'll repeat it if someone of you heard already it's going to be like the you know reran i love lucy reran show from the way so just bear with me so shakespeare and shakespeare brother were camping and it was night it was dark in the night and um, it's all well protected well camped and uh, in the middle of the night shakespeare gets up and the uh, camp like they can see the whole sky and he asks his brother brother what do you see what do you notice and the shakespeare's brother says oh i can see the stars i can see the constellations i can see the light of the particular you know whatever galaxy i can see the nebula is disappearing the shooting stars exactly how i predicted from my astrological view i can see the moon i can see and shakespeare says what else can you see i can see the sun may be coming in a couple of hours and what else can you see it looks like the maybe eighth or seventh day of the waning moon of the part of the fortnight what else can you see i can see tomorrow could be maybe a mild weather maybe 23 24 temperature shakespeare says what else can you see 
And brother says, okay, I know you are not Shakespeare, sorry, Sherlock Holmes. Radhika Prasad was having a seniors moment. It was Sherlock Holmes. So, Sherlock Holmes was an animal detector, like a detective. So, finally, Sherlock Holmes' brother asks him, so, so what, 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 are you, what, what are you seeing? I said, brother, and he says, brother, the camp is missing. We had a camp over our heads. It's missing. And Sherlock Holmes' uh, brother goes, oh, oh, okay, yeah, I completely lost that. So sometimes what happens is in the pursuit of our transcendental life or bhakti, there's a glaring fact facing at us and we will completely miss it. We are looking at all the stars and the Vedas and the Bhakti Yogas and the Pancharatras and the Puranas and, and the glaring fact at us, we completely miss. And the glaring fact at us, that staring at us is Bhakti Yoga, the reason they give a life of a incarnation after he preached is to show how he lived and behaved in this planet. You see that in Jadavarat's play, in Jadavarat, you see in Parikshit Maharaj, you see every single character, you look Bharat Maharaj, every single character, after they finished all the Bhagavatam life, they show how they actually become completely sensitive in their behavior to this world. That's the epistemology of Bhakti. Gaining a lot of Bhagavatam knowledge, gaining a lot of Puranas knowledge, yeah, that's very good, but at the end it has to transform into a tangible change in our behaviors and characters, which eventually becomes a catalyst for a transformation of this whole planet. Do you understand where I'm taking you? Because usually we are, it's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, it's nothing wrong, you know, memorizing the Shastras, now that's good. So nothing wrong with memorizing the doctrine, that's good. Nothing wrong with memorizing the theology and just getting a good grasp at it. Nothing wrong with it. Good. Good on you. But finally, when you see a life of a preacher, when you see a life of incarnation, the way they show that is with how did he transform? How did he actually make a catalyst to transform the planet, to transform the universe? That's the mission of Bhakti Yoga. That's the mission of Bhakti Yoga. It's about character change. It's a behavioral change. It's become sensitive. It's become sensitive to other people. It's become sensitive of how others are perceiving us. It becomes sensitive. There is a saying from Radhanath Samara. You say, you preach all day. You speak only when it is necessary. You preach all day but you speak only when it's necessary. So our preaching is our behavior, our preaching is our character, exemplary characters, sensitivity to others. That's what it has to transform. That's the reason every time you see an incarnation, at the end, they will be, they show how he lived his life. So we are seeing that part of the Bhagavatam, where it's showing how Kapila Muni lived his later part of his life. Does that make sense? Does that, is that a good premise to start this? Okay. So I am supposed to cover three verses. With my reputation, I can hardly get through one. So, <laughs> let's see how we go. Okay. Uh, what is the date? 10th of December, 2023 still. We are doing chapter 3, chapter 33, verse number 23. Okay, Dhyayati Bhagavad Rupam Yadaha Dhyana Gocharam Sutta Prasanna Bhadanam Samasta Vyasta Chintaya Dhyayati Bhagavad Rupam Yadaha Dhyana Gocharam Suta Prasanna Badanam 
समस्त व्यस्त चिंतया ध्यायती भगवान रूपम यदा ध्यान गोचर सूत प्रसन्ना वदनम समस्त व्यस्त चिंतया ध्यायती भगवत रूपम यदा ध्यान गोचर सूत प्रसन्न वदनम समस्त व्यस्त चिंतया लेडीज ध्यायति भगवदूपम यदा ध्यान गोचर सूत प्रसन्न वदन समस्त व्यस्त चिंत यस प्लीज ध्यायति भगवदूपम यदा ध्यान गोचर सूता प्रसन्न वदन समस्त व्यस्त चिंत ध्यायति प्रसन्न यदा ध्यान गोचर सूत प्रसन्न वदन सुत समस्त व्यस्त चिंत ध्यायती मेडिटेटिंग भगवद रूपम अपन फॉर्म ऑफ सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड है यथ विच आहा इंस्ट्रक्टर ध्यान सॉरी ध्यान गोचरम द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ मेडिटेशन सुत द सन and those actually words are cognate suta also becomes an in sanskrit suna suna and suna becomes in english sun i'm serious same words suta also becomes suna and then in english it becomes sun the same words it's cognate prasanna vadanam with a smiling face samasta On the whole, vyasta, on the parts, chintaya, with her mind. Translation by Sri Prabhupada Ki. Thereafter, having heard the great, with great eagerness and in all detail from her son Kapila Dev, the eternal smiling personality of God, Deva Huti, began to meditate constantly upon Vishnu form of the Supreme Lord. So. Okay, let's see how I'll do this, but let's start with this. This is in. Uh, you might, if you have been a little familiar to Vedic literatures, Puranas, Upanishads, Upapuranas, any kind of Vedic literature, this is a very, very, very common way to describe Krishna. Every time he comes. you will always see there will be an adjective of the of his expression prasanna vadana smayamanam samsmayana he always is a with, with he comes with a smiling face there could be an absolute savaging war between the demons and the demigods and he comes in garuda and they say he had this little smirk on his face it's kind of like do you guys know what you're doing and even when arjuna gives like a whole geeta to krishna in the first chapter he practically gives like arjuna geeta to krishna and then finally you will find sometime somewhere in 2.2 2.3 krishna is like looking at him like with a hmm. like you you must be joking <laughs> and um, brahma first time explains when maji first time explains his in, encounter with god in the second and third cantos of bhagavatam it's divided into various parts the first thing he he tells that even before he was far from the vaikuntha even if approaching krishna actually comes out of his way out of the gates 
come to Brahma, shakes his hand, and with a smiling face says, How you been? There's something about him always becoming this. It's not just in Bhagavad. You can pick any Purana. Every time Krishna is described, Vishnu is described, it will be Prasanna Vadanam, Samsmayamana, Smayamana, Prahasan Iva Bharata, Tadaha Rishikesha. He always has a little smile. In some cases, the smile is like, I think you you got your logic a little mixed up. Or in some case, it's like, seriously? You, you teaching me Gita here? And some case, it's like, you got no idea, guys. And some case, it's like, I told you, you just don't listen to me, do you? It will be various expressions. In, I'm, I'm referring to the the Ajita form when he comes as a turtle. It's like, do you, do you ever listen to me? Like, you know, I, I, I asked you to do a truce. I gave you a strategy. I come here and you mess the whole thing up. Like, it's like, <laughs> there's always this smirk, this smiling face on it. And sometimes it's just benevolence, just kindness. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm fine. I'm glad finally you're here. Sudama. So there is always this smile. Why is this smiling face about gods? And even his devotees become like that. I remember I used to have a devotee, who, um, kind of Siksha guru who was a Shudra. He would eat meat. And everywhere he used to walk in 42 degrees in March in India. It's unforgiving heat. I don't know who's from South India here. Oh, come sorry there. I, but I don't know if he lived in South India, so you, you spent some time there? It's unforgiving heat. You are here, oh Janmashtama, you are there. Is it, does it forgive you? <laughs> no. And I used to have this, there's no forgiving. There's no like point come and says, okay, I've tortured you enough. No. Just when you thought you tortured enough, it will double up. <laughs> so... So this teacher of mine, he was Sikshal, he was Shudra, he was a meat eater, and he used to walk in 44 degrees heat with his sari bundles, and his job was going to show place to place. And his final stop was my mother's place. And he would come like at 4 o'clock after he's done, taking the real grunt of the sun, and he comes to my house, and he has this pleasing smile. And we're like, what, what are you coming from Rishikesh or Banaras? What's the deal with you? This pleasing smile on their faces. Why? Why? You need, we need to, I know this is a, a rasa, but at the same time behind the rasa there is some technique, the te philosophical technique we need to understand. So philosophical technique is called divine simplicity. You ever heard of divine simplicity? Of course. I need to, <laughs> I need to be careful when you are out. <laughs> so divine simplicity is the difference between a conditioned soul and God. You want me to explain? You want me to explain? A conditioned soul is dependent on so many things on this world. The five elements, the hankara, the manasa, the bhutas, the gods, the angels, you know, the prakriti, you know, the chemicals, the biologicals, the forefathers, the, the semen that they pro provided us. So much we are dependent. So our conditional reality is very, our conditional existence is very complex because it's dependent on so many things. The divine simplicity is, it's not in the sense that divine is simple, it's simplicity in the sense that it doesn't have any causes to rely on. That's divine simplicity. When an unconditional reality and absolute truth doesn't have a cause to rely on, he doesn't depend on anybody. It is just a natural expression to be pleasant, to have a pleasant smile all the time. Even in between like great wars like Shiva Sagar Samudra, or even between his own dear friend getting completely confused and practically giving him a Bhagavad Gita course, like Bhakti, Bhakti Viksha, Bhakti Shastri course to God. Even between he meets his own devotees like Prati Maharaj, Agindra, 
Indra were having this fierce battle and he comes and like someone else would have been, guys, what are you doing here? And he's like, he's looking at Putra Maharaj and Indra is like, I, I saw this coming, kind of look. Why, do, why does, there is this generosity in this unconditional absolute Krishna, the generosity is as his existence is of divine simplicity. He doesn't have any other causes to depend upon. He doesn't owe anybody. The reason we are complicated in our hearts, we are congested in our hearts, is because we always owe something to someone. It's a painful thing to harbor. It's a kind of burden to harbor. You understand what I'm trying to say? But when you don't have that burden to harbor, when you are unconditional, even a devotee becomes like that. Why? He doesn't have anything to harbor anymore because the only can, the only thing he relies on is Krishna Prasad. So he naturally becomes a person other than also. He may walk 42 degrees the whole day and you get there and you see him and like, why are you so happy? What, 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 am I funny? What? what? So that's the Prasanna Vadana. So he doesn't have any character flaw. God doesn't have any character flaw. This is a very important physical, philosophical point to understand. God doesn't have any character flaws. Anything, even if he's chopping Shishupala's head, even if he's letting Arjuna pierce Bhishma's body, like practically making a net out of his body, or he is delivering Dromaraj, or he is delivering his own mother Devahuti. Now you will be fine, you'll find this very surprising, some of you may find this surprising. The love is the same. How? How could like he be letting Arjuna pierce? If Arjuna didn't do it, he tried that twice. I think it was on the third day or ninth day of Mahabharat. So it's a beautiful book, Mahabharat. When you get a chance to read the book. I think it was third day. Arjuna wasn't trying too hard. And Krishna said, you know what, I had enough of this. He said, Arjuna goes, please, please, relax, I'll do it. Okay, I don't know how long I'm going to wait. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Ninth day. Now Bhishma is woe to Duryodhana. He comes back and is really, really, you know, havocing the whole battlefield. And Krishna is like, wait a minute, I waited six days, no, not now. He is good. And Arjuna comes and begs his feet, please, I'll do it, I'll do it tomorrow. Watching you. So, that fearful or chopping of Shishipa's head, or his love to Kunti Devi when he's departing, or his hugs to Uddhava, or his hugs to Sudama, his hugs and, you know, cuddles and kisses to, Dwa, uh, to the queens in Dwarak. Dwarka, please you, please, you have to come to this level, please. There is no difference between those two loves. It's paradoxical, but, but reflect on this. That's why they call God all benevolent, all omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnibenevolent. omnibenevolent. The reason for Omni Benevolent is his kindness has no difference when he's chopping Shishupala's head, when he's sucking the life of Putana's breast, and when he's cuddling his Dwarka queens, or touching Kunti Devi's foot and taking his du her dust with reverence. There is no difference to this kindness. It takes a long time of reflections to get this. The day you get this, the day you get Krishna Consciousness. Because Krishna Consciousness is not just about your Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness is also trying to, trying to understand Krishna's Consciousness. Do you understand the difference? Do you understand the difference? Krishna Consciousness is not just us becoming conscious of Krishna. Krishna Consciousness is also understanding Krishna's consciousness, how he is benevolent when he is chopping the head of Shishupala and he is chasing Saindava like a lion changes a, chases a deer puppy, puppy deer, 
And when he's touching Kunti's feet, there is no one ounce of difference in his kindness. The, the day you get this, the day you got Krishna consciousness. The day you got it. Because you, we need to understand the mercy of God. How can we become Krishna conscious if we don't understand fully absolute mercy of Krishna? The point is to understand absolute mercy of Krishna. Our business is not to fight Maya. That's not our business. If you want to fight Maya eternally, you'll come back to fight Maya. Okay? Our business is not fight Maya. Our business is to love Krishna. Maya is taken care of. That's last in the list to worry. That's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 20, 30, 40. I don't know what number. Our business is not fighting Maya. Our business to always trying to understand what are Krishna's emotions that he does like acts like this in, in this case and he acts like this in this case and it's so paradoxical but the, there's no absolutely no difference one ounce of difference in his love. And then Janma Karma Chami Divyam Yogum Yoti Tatata. Then you understood Krishna and Tattva. When you understand in Krishna and Tattva, what happens? Our behavior will change. We don't need to try too hard to expand this movement. It's a myth. If you think we have to put our blood and you know sweat and up, no. All we need to expand this movement is exemplary characters, exemplary sensitive people. People who outside people don't have any hesitation to approach. Of course, you might say, what about you know Radhika Prasad? We always you know listen about all the Sankirtan story, and you are not. You also look like we see all the pictures and all that. But what about the blood and sweat and tears? But that's ecstasy. The blood and sweat and tears that goes out. I met a lady the other day and she was talking about Sadhguru. And she said, do you get that kind of that ecstasy? You know, he calls this, this funny language, yes, that some kind of internal engine engineering for ecstasy or something. He's got some kind of fancy terms to use. And she asked me on the face, do you ex ex experience that kind of ecstasy? I said, where do you want to start? We start our ecstasy at 4 o'clock for 16 4 o'clock a.m. in the morning and it goes on for 16 rounds. And then it goes about maybe two, three hours of reading average of Vita Bhagavatam and related, which is equal ecstasy. And then you think I'm standing here from 10 o'clock, I don't know, it was 4 o'clock nearly, I don't know, what, that, what does that make? 6 or 7 hours or whatever, six, 8 hours. You think I'm standing in these 38 degrees, you think like, what are you doing? And you're collecting, like sometimes you just lose change, some gold coins and lose change. Sometimes, of course, you get good donations, but you have no idea what kind of ecstasy, what kind of pleasure we're going through here standing like this. You have no bleepest idea. So I said, count now, how many hours of ecstasy? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, that comes to nearly eight hours of ecstasy. So, just remember the word Hare Krishna. <laughs> when you are on this planet, just remember these two words. All you need to remember two words. Just find some Hare Krishnas. And she's like, God. <laughs> you have a sense of humor. I'm serious. She goes, you have a sense of humor. I know I'm serious. So that's Krishna consciousness. We are not here to fight Maya. F Maya fighting can take care of itself. We are here to understand the consciousness of Krishna. And then we become Krishna conscious. There's a light difference between this, the same words but paradoxically two different approaches. 
Did I completely throw you out of the deep end, or do you guys stay here? Are you still here, or like, what drugs are is this guy on? <laughs> so he, he, he must be there. Must be some things he's taking before he comes here. Does that make sense? Or like, why is that? What are you talking about? Is that okay? Sure. You yeah. keep going. Okay. Twenty-four. So because um, I, I want because. I have a reputation of not completing my job, so I'll, I'll read the next verse. I'll just do it myself, yeah, no call and response. So the next term is, she did so with serious engagement in devotional service because she was strong in renunciation. She accepted only the necess bare necessities of the body. She became situated in knowledge due to realization of the absolute truth. Her heart became purified. She became fully absorbed in meditation upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and all misgivings due to modes of material nature disappeared. Okay, here the word it is very rarely, the actual word is lodged in Bhagavatam, the Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti Pravaha, this is Bhakti Yoga also. Very rarely they use words like that, when the, when the, when the speaker wants to speak empathically, he actually uses the word like Krishna, Otherwise, they'll be using like Narayana or Paramatma or Vasudeva or, you know, um, Vishwaksena. So many, object, so many other names. But when, when the speaker speak, wants to become emphatic, they'll actually say Krishna. You'll notice that. You do a Bhagavad a few times, you'll notice the speaker's mood. And when we say, even say with Bhakti Yoga, so we need to understand Bhakti Yoga. I'm going to ask you a question. Two problems we need to identify, two things obviously. One, we need to understand why does Bhakti Yoga not work and why does Bhakti Yoga work? Okay, I want you to think about this. Okay, if you have to make notes, make notes. If you have to meditate on this later on, please do that. But two things that you need to understand. Number one, first, why doesn't Bhakti Yoga work in some cases? A other point, why does Bhakti Yoga work? Of course, of course, the obvious point, which is which can is completely non-deniable, is that Bhakti Yoga would not work if you are continuously making offenses. That's obviously a clear answer. We don't need to talk about that because it's given, it's self-evident. Self-evident. Yeah, I lodged it. <laughs> so I lodged it, so I lodged it. <laughs> So, self-evident, yeah? So that's a self-evident fact. Devotee offenses, that's self-evident, you know, that's a cop-out. My, my, my Gurudev says that's a cop-out. <laughs> so we don't, we don't do that. So I'm talking about ancillary problems. Why, why wouldn't Bhakti, why does Bhakti Yoga work and why doesn't Bhakti Yoga, why does Bhakti Yoga work? Anybody want to take a shot? Apart from the offences, offences is taken, granted. Yes, please. Very good, very good. You, are, you, you always have to send me a googly, don't you? You always, you have, you always have a left, left field, interesting point, yes. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Any more? Yeah, that's a starting point. Yes, definitely. Any, any other? Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, so both came left field. Um, but maybe it will tie up into my points anyway. So I don't have to be so defensive. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Uh, anything else? You putting your hand up? Some happened. Oh, very nice. So you're tying it to her. Very good. Anybody hesitating there? Or? Okay. We have been. I'm coming from a social perspective. What happens in the planet since we open our eyes after coming our mother's womb? We get programmed of anything 
that we have to acquire, anything that we have to achieve as something to acquire. Listen to this carefully. Anything to acquire, we take it as something to earn and win our way through. You have to get a job, you have to go and please and win with your academics, win with your pedigrees, win with your resumes. Something to earn is what we have been programmed. That's how our programming is. You go to an interview, you get grilled, absolutely. I, I might have gone, oh God. 120, maybe, interviews in my corporate life. Like, after the, to the end, I was like, don't even forget, forget about preparing. <laughs> Were you prepared? Next question. So it's normal, when you go to, you get grilled, don't you? Just, just absolutely grilled for two hours. You have to prove your worthiness. You have to achieve something. Once you get there and go into the top, you have to achieve. So this programming, what it does to us is it also kind of slips into our bhakti life as something to achieve, a Vaikuntha flight to achieve, something to earn. Ramburu Mataji, where she was here last year, you have to listen to the car class very carefully. It was like one of the best classes that I've heard in the last 20 years. Classic. She tells specifically, I was like, it's not something to earn. Bhakti yoga is about something to lose. Lose that is not necessary that you have acquired. Lose an illusory life that is not necessary that you have been imprinted on, that you have taken, inscribed in your heart. Lose that inscription. Lose the conditioning. Lose this nature of acquiring. It's about not it's not about acquiring, it's about discovering. We have a Avrutam Jnana Metena, Jnana Nityavarina, Kama Rupena Kaunteya. Thank you very much. Avrutam, specific philosophical language there. We've been covered by Krishna says this again, Avrutam, Avrutam. You have been covered. The point is about not achieving something, going and achieving this position, going and achieving this, going and achieving of, you know, reading Bhagavatam 12 times or Chaitanya Charitam Vita 10 times. Uh, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good. Please read Bhagavatam at least 12 times. Please read Chaitanya Charitam at least 10 times. Please read Bhagavad Gita at least 56 times. Okay. I'll lower the bar. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. But the point to understand, it's not about earning, it's about discovering, it's about uncovering and losing something that you don't need. The conditioning, you know, what are the problems? What are the real on-ground realities? Sex, drugs, intoxication, prestige, name. Do I have a name? You know, when I come to the temple, how many people, you know? You know, how come that little brat, 14 years old, he didn't even say Hare Krishna to me. Little brat, how long have you been here since? You know what I'm saying? It's about this, it's about losing the conditional, losing these tendencies of what does Sigmund Freud say? Help me out, sure. So, anima, anima, okay, I got it. Anima. <laughs> rusty, a bit rusty. Anima, isn't it? That libits, that libit, it. Say you got that's it. So the eight, you know, Carl Jung says anima, but Sigmund Freud says eight. Yeah, okay, I got it. So this animal propensity, this animal propensity, this base animal propensity, you know, sex, drugs, alcohol, prestige. It's not about gaining. The bhakti is not about gaining. It's about sorry. It's about losing. When you got this. You have practically deserved to be in Vaikuntha. 
for all practical purposes, you are in Vaikuntha, wherever you are, it's a Vaikuntha bubble you are living in. I promise. You don't need a flight like Dhruva Maharaj to jump into a flight and go to Vaikuntha. You could be in Vaikuntha here. You could create your own bubble of Vaikuntha around you. Kesi Kurvanti Tirthani, Santasthina Gadabhita. You create your own Vaikuntha bubble wherever you are. It's not about gaining, it's about losing. You, you create your own dham wherever you are. You create your own little bubble Vaikuntha. Three modes of material nature doesn't affect you anymore. Why? Because you're in a Vaikuntha bubble. You don't need to wait until you die to go to the Vaikuntha, to go to the spiritual world. You can create a bubble around you. A character of Vaikuntha. A consciousness of Vaikuntha. Then you are in Vaikuntha. How is death going to depart you from it? Come on, what is death? Come on. How can death depart you from, from your consciousness? See, it's childish. Childish. What is death going to do to you? Nothing. Nothing. So that's the consciousness. You create your own Vaikuntha bubbles. How can material affect you? How can Maya trouble you when you're already surrendered to Maya saying, no, I'm, my business is not to fight you, my business is to serve Krishna. You know what Maya, Maya Devi will say? Muktim swayam mukulta anjali seyo tesman dharmartha kama moksha samya pratiksha She's waiting for your liberation. She's waiting to send you. You understand? So, now we understood what is the problems in bhakti, right? Now we need to understand what is help you bhakti. What does it help you with bhakti? Quickly go through them. This is a problem. There's a problem with even understanding God. It's in both. It's very, very prevalent in the academics. Particularly in the academics, it's very, very prevalent. You understand what I'm saying by academics? I'm talking not just our um, Bhakti Riksha Bhakti course made, Bhakti Vaibhav materials. I'm talking academics as in the sense of universities. How do you, when you have a power, it's all about control experiments. When you go enter into academics, you're trained about, you heard about this? It's called control experiments. Control experiment means, when you want to know something, you should be able to pin it down like a butterfly. You pin it down in the laboratory, dissect it and understand it. You pin a frog down in a laboratory, you dissect it and understand it. But God by nature, God by definition, is supposed to be out of your sensual perception, adhokshaja. So how are you going to expect to pin him down in a laboratory and because I can sense God, because I can logically prove there is a God and when I dissected it, you know, it looked like blue skin or some kind of funny blood coming out. Is that how you do God? How do you do God when the authority is much higher? If you want to meet Prince Charles, oh King Charles, sorry, sorry, sorry. So if you want to meet kings, oh, <laughs> stop down. <laughs> you have to start counting my eyes. <laughs> King Charles, how do you get to know him? How? Like pin him down in the laboratory and know him? No, you please him. Simple. If there is a job that there's 150 applicants and you want to get a job, what is your best chance? To play, huh? Wow! <laughs> you must be Indian. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> to please the interviewers. To show the interviewer that you are capable of that position. Isn't it right? Tell him that you hire me and I'll transform your company. And I'm yours. I'm your man. You, jump, you say jump, you say jump, I say how high. Isn't that how it works? In interviews, isn't it? If you say, the, if you use this words, you 100% success. 
All you need to say, you don't answer any question. Just walking out of the interview, you say, you say jump, I say how high. Here is your paycheck. Contract, sign it, you got the paycheck. So when you have something that is a higher authority, you don't pin him as a butterfly or a frog in a laboratory. You please the person. That's why Bhakti Yoga works. Even, I mean, you even refer to the Shastras, like Da Vinci Code, for example. Just joking. <laughs> you have a sense of humor. So even refer to the Shastra, Da Vinci Code. What does the teacher say? The teacher, I don't know, anybody read the Da Vinci Code? Don Brown? This was 2000, 2007 or something. I remember, I used to travel in Sydney, in the city, in the buses, in the train stations, in the movies. Done. Everybody, like, Da Vinci Code, Don Brown. And so I was like, oh, I gotta get this book. I read the book and, and uh, sorry, I watched the movie. What does the teacher, the teacher say? He shows Christ and Mary Magdalene's hands in the picture of the Last Supper and he shows the chalice. How is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's hands when he's chanting Hare Krishna? Can you see the chalice? So the God's mercy comes to us by completely convincing him that you will not exploit and abuse the freedom and independence he gives you. And then you become a chalice. That's exact meaning, true translation of the word bhajana. Bhajan. E bhajan timam bhakta. Maite. Tis chapi ham. Bhaja. How many times the Krishna says Bhaja? Bhaja is not the you know Hindu Delhi Bhaja. Bhaja is becoming this chalice, this open arm, open arm, open hearted person to happy to receive God's mercy with his grace. When he thinks it's he, he wants to give, when he thinks it's necessary and we deserve to take it. That's how you please a higher authority. Not by trying to pin him and dissect him with academics. You know, where is God? Where is God? I talk to this atheist of this world like my dear auntie. Where is God? Where is God? What do you mean, where is God? Where is God? What, what, what do you mean, where is God? Show me God. Show me God. I want to touch him. What do you mean you want to touch him? What is your problem? Do you deserve? Why should he touch? Why should he show you? I spent 25 years of my life in baptism. I was reading every sermon on Sundays. I followed my parents every single day. Okay, obviously he doesn't think that was enough. Or he doesn't think I deserve that he show him. Anyway, you know, who gives a toss? Let God be there. I'll be here. I'm an atheist. You know God? Yeah, go away. Beautiful realization. What an idiot. You have a higher authority. Like that's little manners, little decency, little etiquette. You know, show him that you deserve his mercy. Is that a problem? Why is that a problem? Taking heads. So these are the problems. So I have gone through how, why, apart from the offenses, why the bhakti that may not work in some cases. And I showed you why bhakti works in some cases. Yeah? Because God is not something you pin him down in a laboratory. It's you become a chalice, a bhajan, a vessel of receiving the mercy. That's why Prabhupada when he chants. He started it. Hare Krishna, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadha, Sri Vasadi Gura Bhakta Vinda. That's chalice, becoming a vessel for the mercy. So these are the theological points. Why God is happy? Because His character, his character has no flaw. Why devotees become happy and prasanna vadana? Because they are completely, they are completely, now they don't have any disturbances. What's the disturbance? What's the worst fear? Death. 
I mean, seriously? <laughs> so, I think I've read of how Bhagavad Gita works, how Bhagavad Gita, uh, sorry, how Bhakti doesn't work. And I also covered why, what is the other way? When you please someone, when you have to please a higher authority, there, there has to be some decency. Don't you think so? What do you think? Don't you, have, don't you think there should be some decency when you're pleasing a higher authority? Some etiquette? Some patience? What's the problem? I don't, I don't see any problem. So, we have patience for lives and lives and lives. Mama, Janmani, Janmani, Shari, Bhavata, Bhakti, Raiti, Gita. Janmani, Janmani, Shari. You, 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 you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, okay. So, before you ask me, before we go and ask for refunds, I'll do the last verse. Her mind became completely engaged. What do we have? Ten minutes. Okay, Radhika Prasad, Russia. Her mind became completely engaged in the Supreme... I'm not reading the tra uh, Sanskrit. Please translate me. Uh, please forgive me because I want to get through. Her mind became completely engaged in the Supreme Lord and she automatically realized the knowledge of the impersonal Brahman as Brahman realized so. She was freed from the designations of the materialistic concept of life. Thus all material pangs disappeared and she attained transcendental bliss. I have to be honest. To explain how Brahman realization is automatically consisted within the bhakti realm, I need about two or three hours to go like technically and make you completely doubtless about that. Completely zero doubt about it. That the Brahman, impersonal Brahman realization is within the bhakti. I need like two hours. So I'm, I'll see how I go. Yeah, because we only have ten minutes. I, I want to, yesterday was Ekadashi. I think we're all <laughs> waiting for that breakfast. So I don't, I don't want to cause any devotee offenses here. <laughs> so I know, so I, I'm, I will be a little mindful. Yeah. But one thing I want, I just jumped the gun there, sorry. I just want to cover one more thing here before I go to that part and do a quick nutshell. Because she, she accepted only the necessities of the body. So story time. Too much philosophy. I don't want you to fall asleep. A little story. Sankirtan story. December marathon. Oh. How are you guys going? December marathon. Come those Gita are become the buckle of the Gita belt in Sydney, you know, make Sydney the buckle of the Gita belt. So I was, a Sankirtan story, I was there yesterday, very, um, was it yesterday? Yesterday, wasn't it? The lady that came in, yeah, yeah, yesterday, yeah. I get mixed up with my stories. Anyway, we have our mirror to correct me there, uh, the fun police, the home trainer. <laughs> so, so, this lady came to me and said, I, love, I feel so, so protected, secure and peaceful just to be around your stall. She was a Western, complete Caucasian. I feel so protected and secure just staying in stall. But the problem is, as soon as I go away into my more ordinary life, I take these books, I never get through. And she said, which is the reason I come, I get excited, but I think it's a waste transaction. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I am doing the books, not you. So let me, <laughs> let me be the judge of if this is a wasted activity or not. Don't jump the gun. She said, why? See, sweetie, I said, there's three things that you have to do when you take up these books. There's three things that you have to do. And once you do these three things, and then if you come back and tell me it was a wasted effort, I'll sign a contract with you that yes, this is a wasted effort and I'll never set up a stall here. She said, wow, that's, that's a big call. What are the three things that I should do? I said, number one, simplify your life. Do you need so many memberships in your life? Do you need so many subscriptions in your life? Do your children need to really need to go to 12 classes a week? Do you need your credit card always to max out every 29th and 30th of the month? I am a householder. I have two children. 
I watched my parents being householders. I did uh, practically Brahm, they were like Pakka Karnataka kind of Brahmana family. We have, but why do you why do you have to lost in the get lost in these subscriptions? These me- how many memberships do you have? Uh, about five. Do you use all of them? Uh, no. How many subscriptions do you have? About twelve. Do you really need all of them? Uh, um, I don't know. I need to think. How many classes do you take your children to? Uh, karate, taekwondo, dance, piano, swimming, cricket, athletics, gymnastics, da 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 da. What, what are you trying to make out of your child? What you want you to come out like a what Jackie Chan? What what do you want out of you? What a superhero? Trying to jump from those Sydney towers and try what, what what are you expecting? What you're trying to make like all the firemen in Sydney jobless? By making your son a superhero? What, what, what are you doing? Ha, what about simplifying your life? What about having a gatekeeper that is watching what comes in and what goes out? Even in Facebook. Oh, 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 that's hard, eh? What is Radhika Prasad talking about? Even in Facebook land. You have to have a gatekeeper who's coming in, who's going out of your lives. Do you need so many scripts? Of... Simplify your life. Like I go to New Zealand retreats, to my Gurudev's retreats every I've been going there for God knows how long. You will get sometimes you may get almost sick of it. That's how many times he'll say lifestyle range nearing, lifestyle range nearing, lifestyle range nearing. After some times, like you get like Gurudev, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> lifestyle being the lady. Okay. <laughs> Simplify life. That's number one. Number two. Find some people of like-minded people who can give you some Atma Gyan for God's sake. What is Atma Gyan? Consciousness. You cannot prove anything in this world prima facie. You understand prima facie? Of course you do. Prima facie, you cannot prove anything in this world. Even I cannot prove this mind exists here more than I can prove my own consciousness. That is my first experience. How about keeping your consciousness as primary in your life? Associating with people who keep consciousness as primary in their life. Cheto Darpana Marjanam Bhavamaha Dhavari Nirvapana. Why is his name Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It's not accident. God doesn't just bump into names. God doesn't just bump into poets. God doesn't just bump into poems. No, it doesn't happen like that. Why, why, is, it, why is the reason his name is Chaitanya? Ever thought about that? Why does he start his most famous prayer with Chaito Darpan Ever thought about that? Because he's trying to tell us Consciousness is primary, a priori, undefeatable, self-evident reality. You have to go through his discussions with Sarovam Bhattacharya very carefully. Then you will know what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy is. After that he kind of lost, he kind of left the logic behind. But when he just came out of his university, he met Sarovam, he had still this university logic going on. And he goes logic, he talks about all this, Sota Pramana. Self-evident. One thing you cannot divide, defi- deny is your consciousness. So I can't be con- more confident about this mic here as much as I can con- be confident about my own consciousness. So I said, associate and keep company of people who are always thinking about this. And she looked at me and she said, wow, I never thought about that. And she said, do you want me to tell you the third one? I said, she said, yeah, okay. I'll tell you this, okay? You say this is a wasted transaction. You say this is a wasted activity. I'll sign it with you. Try this for one time, I said. Do you have a, do you have a, do you have a little confidence that there's a designer in this world? She said, yes. Try this out for, for one time. Try this experiment. When you get... Before you ask God for unlimited resources, 
before you ask God for unlimited protection, before you go ask God for unlimited theodicy, justice, before you ask God to completely justify his problem of evil, theodicy. Did I spoke about this before? I won't go into this now, we have very much less time. That's why I said I need like two hours for all this. Theodicy. I will sign off that yes, these are all God's problem. But first I want you to try this. She said, what? How about trying to show God first before he gives you that freedom, before he gives you that resources, before he gives you that autonomy. You understand autonomy? Before he gives you that autonomy to maneuver, before he releases you from these shackles of material pangs, how about proving to God that when, we act, when you actually are released, you will actually make a good use of that liberty. You will actually make a good use of that freedom. You will actually make a good use of that time. How do you make a good use of that time? By sharing His mercy, by becoming a channel, a chalice, a portal of magnifying His mercy to everybody you meet. I said, try this. Anybody remember this? Number one? Number two? Number two? Yeah. People that are like-minded like that. Simplified, simplified life. Don't complicate with too much... Don't complicate life with too much material, too much sex, too much drugs, too much complicated jobs, complicated extra... No, don't do that. Number three? I'll say, I'll sign out. I'll say, I'll sign. I'll go with you and I'll stop this book distribution. You try these three and come back and tell me. It didn't work. What's the third one? Huh? Very good. Oh, nice way to put it. Nice way to put it. Show that you will live a responsible, you will use that resources. You will channelize, you'll become a portal of God's mercy and you'll actually magnify and make sure everybody around you, wherever you go, Yare Deko Tare Kaho Upadesh. Please complete it for me. Hamar? Fantastic. So, so I, he, he always deserved more than me anyway, so I was being, feeling a little uncomfortable wearing that. So that's, show, Bob, show first, what about showing first God? No, no, God needs to show me first his, that he's there. Huh? What's that logic? No, God needs to show me first and then I might, I might give him a chance. Okay, Prabhupada. <laughs> First he showed, then I might consider, you know, I might consider giving him a chance that he'll say, oh, come on man, what's going on here? You know, this little, uh, last story, last thing you so this little boy's kind of, last story, okay, I'll finish up. This little group of little, you know, school children came, and I had this book. I was going through some verses, and the guy said to me, one of those, you know, there's always one, so-called intellectual in the six kids, right? Yeah. You know how it was. Even in churches or even in the mosques, there's always one guy who thinks he's intellectual. How he goes to me, how can you tell that this book is actually related to God and is a revelation from God? How can you tell? I looked at him. I said, how old are you? Uh, 13, 14? What are, your, what, what are you studying these days in school? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what is that woodwork? What is that? Where you, they learn foot tech? Foot tech, woodwork, and some little mathematics, and God knows what else. And I said, clearly, I said, you, you have no idea of philosophy and language. Excuse my language. I, mean, this is, I was being funny to them anyway. I wasn't being, they knew I was being funny. I said, hey, 14 year old buffet, you come here. I said, look at the language. And he comes and says, Cheto darpana marjanam bhava mahadhavagni nirvapanam Cleansing of your consciousness 
so you will become completely equipped to surmount this ocean of existence. You know, uh, historians even call, it's called something called medical materialism. You heard this term before? Medical materialism? So for example, if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has bhava, they call it just a medical condition. That's called medical materialism. You know that. So if some devotee has bhava experiences, they also have a clean, clean explanation for that. There's a box for that. They put you in what's called medical materialism. So whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Mahabhavas is just medical materialism. So I said, is this medical materialism? Cheto darpana marginam bhava mahad naam naam akari bhavuda nijasarva shakti tatra pita nimita smarani nakala. You have invested all your potencies mystically in your name. I said, does that sound like someone who is a medically challenged and mater medical materialist? Is that what you're talking about? You, all you need, if you are really sincere in your heart, if you are really sincere in your heart, all you need is to look at the language carefully. And that is a God's language. So he's looking at me thinking, well, that sounds a little evangel evangelical. <laughs> I'm serious. After you read Bhagavad 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you don't need any more epistemology to say this is God's revelation. Just look at the language carefully. That's your epistemology. It's God's revelation. You just look at the language. You don't need to tell you, uh, you know, Chatur Bhujena. You know, Sudha Darshanam, Medam Rupam, Darshanasi, and Mama, Deva Pyasarupas, Nityan Darshanaka. You don't need the uh, Chatur Bhuja form to come Krishna with Gada Chakra. No. Just look at the language and it's your epistemology. It's God's language. I'm serious. That's your epistemology. Ah, where is God? Uh, God. Oh yeah, if he first shows me the mercy, yeah, I'll, I'll consider him. So, we have problems. Okay, I covered three, three verses there. Perpet, please read on your own time. You know, I always, uh, if, if they start charging me for all the, not completing the verses, I think I'll owe, I owe my life. So, does that make sense? How, how, did, how does that sound? Like, do you, anybody was thrown in the deep end? Do you have any questions? Like, too heavy or is it practical? Or what do you think? Any questions, comments? Oh my god. We've got a very hungry crowd here. <laughs> very hungry crowd. Okay. This is Sunday, Dwadashi, so I, I know you have to go. And I don't want to kill your time anymore. Um, I say that all the time, but I just want to assure you again, I, I, I'm, I'm sincerely and thankful that you're here. I never take any single person of you for granted. I'm even, I, you know, I even meditate when I go away, just meditate your faces, when I'm looking at your faces. When I go away, I even meditate on your faces, just to keep my energy going when I'm chanting. So I don't take any one of you for granted, and I really want to thank you that you're here. Please accept my humble obeisances. Vancha te putri bhasha, kupa sindhu bhaevacha, patita nam bhavane bhyo, vaishnav bhyo namunu. Andhagoti vaishnav nandhi ki jai. Okay, I'll turn the mic off. Before I say, before I say something and get fired or something. No, just joking.